Okay, so mm. if you want to automate any of the parameters on the plugin or any parameters in Reaper at all, um, mm. the button you're after is this one here, which is called Track Envelopes and Automation. So let's say we just wanted to look at our channel one and I want to make it do something automated. So I'll just solo that and if, as long as I solo the decoder as well, that should automatically solo everything in between. Let's just check that that's the case. Yes, we've got reverb, so it's done that. Marvellous. So if you trick, click that one, it'll uh, show you everything in that track that can be automated. And you can automate any of the volumes, you know, how much you're sending to the reverb bus, how much you're sending to the dry bus. You can automate all that stuff. Uh, and also, in this case, it's got all the parameters that are available in my plugin. So as we talked about a little bit at the beginning, you've got X, Y, Z coordinates. So X being front back, Y being left right, and Z being up down. And you've also got azimuth and elevation. Azimuth is just a fancy name for horizontal angle. And it starts straight ahead and goes anti-clockwise in ambisonics, just how it is. So if you want to make something go round in a arc, if I find the, let's close these and I'll be able to open the plugin so we can watch it do it. Uh, let's open that, there we go, and I'll open the thing. So say I wanted to make it move in a kind of arc, um, I could automate azimuth. Now you can either arm it and record it by wiggling it, or you can map it to a MIDI controller or whatever, or you can just edit <coughs> on a, a kind of bar graph manually what you want it to do, which is what I'll do here. So I don't need to arm it because I'm not going to record it in real time, but you can do that. But now you can see a little purple line here, which if I drag that up and down, you see basically zero is straight ahead. As I move it up, it will go round anti-clockwise, and then it will go all the way back to straight ahead again. And so you can just draw on. So if I start down the bottom, I think it's shift to put in a new point. I could make it go over there, and then I could make it I want to make it down, go around in a circle, which sounds a bit naff, frankly, but um, it's all right for demoing. See what it does. Then, if I hit play, that will now automate the azimuth control of that panner. Children of the nations, in heat, motherly love, peace, love, joy. So that does that. Now, because that's only changing the angle. What will also happen is the X, Y, Z coordinates will be updated at the same time because the angle is changing. It's like polar to Cartesian coordinates in math, basically. So make sure you only edit one or the other. So what I mean is, if you edit the azimuth and then also edit the X and Y coordinates at the same time, you could be fighting yourself, trying to do different things at the same time. But it does mean that if you change something that isn't to do with the azimuth, like how far in from the middle it is, then it will remember that and then do the same, the just change the angle. In so I can make it do that. Love, so you can, so you just change. I'm just automating the angle, nothing else. Children of the nation. You can automate the distance as well and different things, but everything that's available is on that button there. So that's doing the azimuth. I could also do distance, for example, which is how far away from the middle it is. So that would edit the distance parameter. Or I turn that off. I could also do the X parameter, which is front backness. Now the problem with that is because I could, if I try to automate those two, I can make my plugin contradict itself. And this is what happens when it does that. So I'm editing the X parameter and azimuth, but editing, editing the angle will also change the X parameter. So I'm changing the X parameter twice. It'll do this. Children of the nations. You see, it's kind of unpredictable as to what that's doing. Sometimes, that's actually not too bad. <laughs> Sometimes it'll flick between two positions as it tries to constantly change what's going on. If you edit X and Y, and, but anyway, you can automate everything to do with the plugin, see what happens, and then if you don't want it to do it, just turn it off again. Turn off, you know, that automation. So bypass it, or you could delete it in, in total, or MIDI learn it. Or there's also a modulation thing. So you can make it modulate via an LFO, you can make it modulate due to another audio track, and you can do all kinds of things. Very Ableton-esque.
That's a bit like side chaining in Ableton, basically, if you use Ableton. Any questions about that little lot? Nobody wants to be on the video. <laughs>